Welcome to part seven of the pandemic preparedness course here at biodefense.com. As always, feel free to download the MP3 file, share the MP3 file, put it on your favorite torrent site, email it to your friends. Everybody needs to know this information, which is why I'm putting it out for free. My name is Mike Adams, the health ranger, the editor of naturalnews.com. And I'm one of uh, a few remaining truly independent journalists who doesn't have a boss uh, in the form of a corporation or, or a corporate boss. We're not run by drug company interests. We're not run by the government. We're not run by government grants. We're not run by corporate interests. And that's why we can tell you the truth that you won't hear anywhere else except in alternative or independent media. Now, in this section, we've got some really important information for you. In part six, we covered this long list of antiviral natural medicines that you'll never hear about in the mainstream media or from the FDA or the CDC. They just don't want you to know the truth about how you can create your own natural medicine. You can even grow your own medicine in a garden or, or even in a, in a windowsill. But now in, in this section, episode seven, we're going to talk about something that I don't think anybody else has talked about, which is how to prevent yourself from having a suppressed immune system. Now, I was writing an article about the bioweapons terrorism angle of Ebola or other pandemic diseases, and it occurred to me that the terrorists are probably already figuring out that America has a very weak population, weak people. I mean physically weak, I don't mean intellectually weak, I mean physically weak. And most Americans live a sedentary lifestyle. And most Americans are on medications, 10 or 12 medications in many cases. Most Americans eat processed foods containing chemical food additives. Now, all these things that I just mentioned contribute to a suppressed immune system. Now, compare that to people in other countries. People in third world nations tend to be more agrarian. They tend to work on farms more. They're outdoors more. They get more vitamin D and sunshine. They engage in more physical activity and physical labor. They don't sit around playing their Xbox and watching TV all day. America is the world's most sedentary nation. And as a result, America is the world's most vulnerable nation to a self-replicating bioweapon. And as I also wrote in this other article, uh, an obvious point, that the terrorists have no doubt already figured out whoever they are or wherever, wherever they happen to be. They don't even need to release a bioweapon in America in order to attack America. They can just go release it down in Mexico City or something like that. And because of the open borders policy of our current U.S. government, infectious disease will just roll right across the border, right into cities like uh, San Antonio, Texas, or San Diego, or Phoenix, for that matter. And from there, it's everywhere. Because what are you going to do? Quarantine the entire southern border? <laughs> Our government refuses to do that. Uh, it, it could be done, but they politically refuse to do that, so it's not going to happen. So America is vulnerable in this way, which really, I don't think the Department of Homeland Security has, has been thinking about this. They tend to think about security from a point of view of blocking kinetic weapons, you know, bombs, explosives, missiles, bullets, nuclear warheads, those kinds of things, which are legitimate threats. Obviously, America needs strong national security. Obviously, America needs nuclear submarines running around uh, in the ocean as a deterrent. I'm glad they exist, and I'm glad America has that, that nuclear sub strength. Uh, I'm not anti-military, uh, by the way, not at all. I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of strong national defense and protecting our borders and protecting our citizens. But that whole system was designed for the kind of warfare that we saw in the 20th century. Kinetic warfare, bombs, bullets, and missiles. It was not designed to deal with the kind of weapons that Ebola could become, which is a, think about this, self-replicating weapon. Ebola could be deployed as a bioweapon in a very, very small vial, just one vial, that could easily be smuggled in, into anywhere. It's pretty easy to smuggle a vial of anything. And then that could be released, and then from there, the weapon replicates itself. And by the way, if you think about it, this could be released by terrorist groups without anybody even knowing it. You don't have to set off a bomb to release Ebola. You don't have to do that at all. It could be released in a stealth mode, you know, covertly, just spread around someplace. And the thing is, the incubation time 
of this Ebola strain that's currently circulating is about 21 days. That's three weeks. And it turns out that what doctors have told us so far is that people look really, really healthy up right up until the last few days. You don't even know they have Ebola until about day 17 or 18. So someone could be walking around with Ebola for two and a half weeks, traveling around, visiting other cities, going home to their family, whatever. They can be spreading Ebola that they don't even know they have because they don't even ha show any symptoms sometimes until two weeks into the, the infection or even two and a half weeks. So I'm not sure how the Department of Homeland Security thinks it's going to stop this. I hope and pray that America has some kind of secret defense that none of us have been told about that gives the country magical powers to stop bioweapons terrorism because obviously we don't want to see Ebola released anywhere near us or, or we don't want to see any, anybody infected with this. We don't want to see anyone suffer from this. And we sure don't want to see it released in North America. Obviously, that, that's where we live. That's where our families live. That's where our friends live. We don't want to see that kind of suffering. But to my knowledge, there's nothing out there that can stop it. So what this means is your strategy as an individual who wants to stay alive, who wants to be able to stay healthy so you can help other people, so you, you can contribute to the security of your community, the safety of your community, you got to stay healthy. That means you have to stop suppressing your immune system, and that's the point of this episode, episode 7. How do you stop suppressing your immune system? The answer is you must first recognize how you are destroying your, your immune function, and then you must stop those behaviors. So that's what I'm going to cover here. And if you combine this wisdom with what we talked about in the last episode, which is ways to boost your immune function, then you have the best of both worlds. You can boost your immune function with all the herbs and antivirals that I mentioned in the previous section, and then you can stop suppressing your immune function by listening to this episode. So how do you suppress your immune function? Well, let's start with the obvious one, pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals are a great big scam for the most part. They, they, yeah, they have their place. Like, for example, if you're undergoing surgery, anesthesia is pretty darn handy. Wouldn't want to live in a world without anesthetics. Wouldn't want to live in a world without emergency antibiotics for acute infections. However, most of the pharmaceutical industry today is focused on things that are they're scams. Like they say, oh, you have ADHD, so you need to alter your brain function with this psychiatric drug. Or they say, well, you have high blood pressure, you need to lower it with this drug instead of telling you to just take more omega-3 fatty acids and drink more water or eat watermelon, all of which would normally just solve the blood pressure problem right away. They tell you you have to take these anti-inflammatory drugs for a lifetime. You see, that's the marketing model of the, the drug industry today. It's to convince you that you have a, quote, disease or a disorder that you can't ever cure, which is why you keep having to take their drugs day after day, year after year for the rest of your life. And what they don't tell you is that these drugs destroy your immune function. And they do it by robbing your body of crucial nutrients. There's a, a pharmacist out there who has a book called Drug Muggers that talks about how drugs rob your body of these essential nutrients. So drugs can cause your body to be depleted of vitamin D, which is crucial for your immune function. They can sap your body of B vitamins, vitamin C, and the minerals that you need for healthy immune functions such as zinc and selenium and magnesium and so on. So these pharmaceuticals that you are taking, I hope you're not taking them, but I know most people are, they are, in fact, making you more vulnerable to Ebola infections. And as a result, people who tend to take a lot of pharmaceuticals are going to be among the first to be infected and die, unfortunately, if this pandemic comes to North America, which hopefully it won't. But make no mistake, being a person who's on 5, 10, or 15 different drugs is not, is not a survival profile for a pandemic. So if you can get off your medication safely and under the guidance of a naturopathic physician, then I urge you to explore doing so. You shouldn't just quit your medications cold turkey. You should work with a qualified physician who can help you do that safely and help you find alternatives to, to doing that. Almost every drug out there has an alternative or a change in your lifestyle or diet that can make that drug irrelevant or obsolete. So pursue that with due diligence. Secondly, most people live 
a lifestyle that is that, that involves foods which also suppress their immune function. They eat a lot of processed foods, factory-made foods, and they eat very few fresh foods. So what is really the best food for your immune system? It's fresh foods, it's fresh produce, uh, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, mostly plant-based foods, but it doesn't have to be all vegetarian to be healthy. Mostly plant-based foods, quite a bit of raw, but it doesn't have to be all raw. You need to have some raw, obviously, in your diet. S sprouts are really great. You can even do juicing. If you love to juice like I do, apples and celery or carrots and oranges, you can just uh, throw a little bit of ginger into some of that juice and you can really have an immune boosting juice. That's the best immune boosting diet that you can have is fresh produce. But most people don't eat that. They eat processed foods that are high in processed salt, that are high in uh, genetically modified oils, such as soybean oil and canola oil and corn oil. These suppress immune function big time in a huge way. In fact, I think all GMOs should be avoided completely for this reason and, and many others. I mean, GMOs, let's face it, have been clinically linked to the growth of massive cancer tumors in rat experiments, just huge tumors that cause the rats to die prematurely. That's, that's not a good sign for human health. And most people are eating these things every single day. Food companies also put a lot of additives into their foods, and these additives suppress immune function and deplete your body of nutrients. At the same time, the foods don't even deliver the nutrients that they should. Most of the foods that you eat, even the fresh produce, is deficient in trace minerals because it's grown in the same soils over and over again, year after year, that are only augmented with three nutrients. That's N, P, K, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And aside from those three, farmers don't put anything else back in the soil. They're not putting any zinc or magnesium or molybdenum or copper or chromium or any of these other elements that your body needs. So the plants are, in fact, fake nutrition. A head of lettuce, for example, a typical head of conventional lettuce, iceberg lettuce, is nutritionally worthless. It, you might as well just be drinking water. There's really nothing in there for you. Versus if you have some organic romaine lettuce or a dark green, let's say, charred plant, grown in nutrient-rich soils that takes up all kinds of minerals, that's different. That's medicine. That's nutrition. But what most people are eating is processed factory foods. And those foods are laced with chemical additives, such as MSG, monosodium glutamate, in the form of yeast extract often, autolyzed vegetable proteins, hydrolyzed vegetable proteins. They're drinking milk that's been homogenized, which is an artificial modification of the fat molecules that makes it very, very unhealthy for human consumption. Most of what they're eating or drinking has been pasteurized, which means the life has been cooked out of it. The proteins have been denatured, and the phytochemicals, the chemical constituents that would normally be medicine, have been destroyed. So if you drink, let's say, naked juice, you think you're getting the benefits of juice? You're kidding yourself. That's nothing but cooked, processed junk juice, even if it's from apples and broccoli in the first place, they've killed it by pasteurizing it. So pasteurized juice is virtually worthless from a nutritional point of view. But it's the additives that are really, really dangerous and that suppress your immune function. All these chemicals, they have chemical preservatives, chemical taste enhancers, chemical sweeteners like sucralose and aspartame. All these chemicals add up and they suppress your immune function and they make you more vulnerable to pandemic threats such as Ebola. And it's no surprise why people who eat a lot of processed food tend to be the very same people who always catch the flu every year, every winter, <laughs> normally. They're living a suppressed lifestyle, and their food is a big part of that. So how do you turn this around? You stop eating things that are made in a factory. It's pretty simple, actually. You stop eating things that come in a box. You mostly buy fresh produce and, and staple ingredients like beans and rice, and then you get your, your produce on top of that. You grow what you can. Grow as much as you can yourself. Do some sprouting. Do some juicing. Buy organic. This is how you boost your immune function every single day, whether there's a pandemic circulating or not. And this will give you a huge health advantage, by the way, in the future as things begin to happen. Now, there's another source of chemicals that suppress your immune function, and people... People poison themselves every single day with these things. 
and that is personal care products. You know, the average person subjects themselves to three or 400 chemicals before they even leave the house every morning. And the vast majority of those chemicals are found in their bathroom. And they put on products in the bathroom. What are they putting on? Well, they're putting on deodorants and makeup and cosmetics. They're using shampoos and soaps and aftershaves and toothpaste. And if you add all these up and you look at all the synthetic dangerous chemicals that are in these products, you've really got hundreds of synthetic chemicals that are going through your skin and being absorbed into your bloodstream and into your body. And these are suppressing your immune function. They're making you more vulnerable to cancer, more vulnerable to pathogens. So how do you stop this? It's simple. You change over to a natural product lifestyle. Now throw out all every product that has artificial fragrance in it for one thing. Most people out there are doing laundry in toxic laundry detergent. And there are many laundry products that are even called so so called free and clear that still contain perfumes. They have a perfume that is added to give it the smell of what they call free and clear. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious and kind of pathetic actually? So you got to get away from the traditional laundry detergents. You shouldn't be using fabric softeners in your dryer. Those are very, very toxic. The average person is wearing clothing that has been soaked and dried in cancer-causing chemicals, and then they put them on their skin, and then they go to work, and they, they perspire a little bit, and then that, that moisture pulls the chemicals right out of the clothing and into their skin and into their bloodstream. Because remember, the skin is porous. It absorbs chemicals. And hey, that's not, not to mention what they do on the weekend. Then they coat themselves with toxic sunscreen with more fragrance chemicals. And some people even just slap perfume and cologne right on their skin. The average perfume, you may not know this, contains over 20 carcinogenic cancer-causing chemicals. They're not even required to be listed on the label because the perfume companies have managed to have a loophole with the FDA that says their formulas are, quote, proprietary information, and thus they don't have to show you what chemicals they're using. How's that for full transparency? So the typical American, and in this case, South Americans uh, operate this way too. They love to put cologne and perfume on. They love laundry detergent that smells like artificial fragrance. I mean, in fact, I've never been anywhere in the world where people love their fragrance as much as South America. They're just all into it. They spray themselves with perfume and cologne on the airplane before they land because they think they have to impress the people at the gate. <laughs> it's just, just amazing. But uh, what they're really doing is giving themselves cancer. And they're, they're suppressing immune function, making themselves more vulnerable to pandemics. So what you need to do then is think about everything that's in your house. The typical person in their pantry, they've got a bunch of cancer-causing chemicals in their foods. And then in, the, in their laundry room, they've got more cancer-causing chemicals. In their bathroom, they have more, yet more. And then in the garage, guess what they have? Well, they've got all those chemical solvents. They've got the pesticides the herbicides, everything for the lawn care that's usually also very, very toxic, the weed killer, you know what I'm talking about. And then they've got fragrance and cleaning products for their cars. And then they've got products for cleaning their, their homes, the, the, the cleaning spray that they use around their home or, I, I don't know, um, fragrance emitters, things that they think make their house smell nice. If you want to use any kind of fragrance at all, you've got to use actual, real, essential oils, which are safe to use. They're not synthetic. They're natural. So if you want to put on some perfume, make sure it's made from essential oil. If you want to have flowery-smelling clothing in your washing machine, use essential oils or use laundry detergent that has essential oils. But believe me, your clothes smelling flowery has nothing to do with whether or not they're clean. That's just an illusion that was created by the, the laundry detergent industry to trick people into thinking that this smell equals cleanliness. It's not even true. Throw out all your soap, replace it with Dr. Bronner's. Very simple. For your, and by the way, for your laundry detergent, I like the brand Ecos, E-C-O-S. Their non-fragrance version works for me. Totally non-toxic. You got to throw out all your cosmetics and get organic cosmetics that are not made with toxic chemicals, don't have fragrance in them, 
and aren't contaminated with lead, which is another problem frequently found in cosmetic products. Now, I know I'm kind of going over this quickly, but I don't want this to be another hour long like the last segment. The thing is, you got to go through your whole house and throw out all this toxic crap that's been poisoning you forever and, and exchange it with green products, clean products, natural products. You need to get into the habit of buying natural products and throwing out all the crap that causes cancer. And by the way, in doing this, you'll not only make yourself less susceptible to a pandemic viral infection, you'll also be preventing cancer. Kind of a nice side benefit, isn't it? I mean, who wouldn't want to not have cancer? So uh, you, you'll be protecting your liver. You'll be protecting your kidneys and even boosting your cognitive function as you do all of this. I have lived a lifestyle for many decades now that's completely free of those synthetic chemicals. I wouldn't touch a product like Tide laundry detergent or Dial soap or what are those uh, dish liquids? I don't even know the names. <laughs> uh, Joy, I think, was a dish liquid. At least that's what I remember from a while back. I wouldn't even touch those products because I know they're filled with toxic chemicals. But now moving on from that, there are other things that you are probably doing in your life that, that are suppressing your immune function. One of these that's very crucial is lack of sleep. Americans tend to suffer from chronic sleep deprivation. That's because they don't allow themselves enough hours of sleep. They are uh, going to work early, early in the morning, sometimes working very long hours. They may have children. They may have uh, schooling to do at, at night, and they're just not getting enough sleep. This is a huge problem during a pandemic. You need to get sleep during a pandemic. You need to have lots of sleep, sufficient sleep. If, you, if a pandemic comes, give yourself per permission to start sleeping 9, 10 hours a night. It will do your immune system some good. The next thing is people like to go to the gym and work out. And I'm all for that. I'm all for physical fitness. But keep in mind that if you really pump iron hard, you're lifting weights, you're doing strength training, you're doing cardio training, you're really pushing your limits, you will exist in a, an immune suppressed state for the next 24 to 48 hours as you recover from that very strenuous exertion. I'm not saying it's bad. In fact, physical training is very, very good for you. But keep in mind that if there's a pandemic sweeping through your city, Going to a gym where everybody touches the same machines over and over again and everybody's sharing the same air over and over again and everybody's in an immune-suppressed state because they're working out so hard, that may not be the best decision. You may want to take some time off from the gym in that situation or perhaps reduce your workout intensity. Just make it a little more mild so that you can take it easier on your immune system. Now, the next thing that really suppresses immune function is air pollution. Again, a lot of people live in cities that, that have polluted air like Los Angeles. That's not as bad as Mexico City or Beijing, obviously, but it's still pretty bad. And if you spend a lot of time commuting in your car every day, you're breathing other people's exhaust on the highway, you're suppressing your immune function because of that. So you want to be able to obviously get into some clean air sources. Indoor air quality is absolutely crucial here, both in your home and in your office. Office air is often contaminated with mold spores. Sometimes home air can be too. So this is something you want to be very careful about. And the single simplest strategy for boosting air quality is to have a lot of plants around you. If you have plants living in your home, then they are functioning as living air filters. They actually clean the air through biological processes. Uh, plants are, uh, they, they breathe, they, they respirate. They take in toxins, they convert them, and they exhale oxygen that you need to breathe. So plants can be used in that way as a very powerful tool for cleansing your air. You can also, of course, invest in air filters. There are a lot of great air filters out there. If you really want the best one that does medical quality air filtration, the brand is IQ Air. IQ Air is used in hospitals and laboratories all over the place. I use one in my lab, and it, it takes everything out of the air. I think including viral fragments, but certainly the particles of dust that viruses may uh, latch onto. So if you, want, if you want to go that route, get an IQ air or something similar. You want the HEPA filtration that's very, very effective and circulates a high volume of air around your office or your home. Here's another thing that suppresses immune function. Toxic heavy metals. 
These metals include lead, cadmium, arsenic, mercury, tungsten, and even the lighter metals such as aluminum. These metals are very, very toxic, and they do suppress immune function. In fact, lead and arsenic are directly linked to cancer. And cadmium is linked to kidney failure, heart disease, hardening of the arteries, skin disorders, many other problems, even personality changes. Lead is extremely toxic. It lowers your IQ, actually harms the cognitive function of children and adults. It's been statistically linked to lowered IQs in children. The thing is, what most people don't realize is they're getting lead from sources that they wouldn't expect. In fact, I pioneered the research in the ICPMS lab, the Atomic Spectrometry Laboratory, where we uh, documented high levels of lead and cadmium in certified organic superfoods, such as rice protein. Rice protein imported from China, sold by many brand name companies in Whole Foods, was found to contain shockingly high levels of lead contamination. They also contain cadmium. Uh, I went on the Dr. Oz show and revealed this to the world and uh, fortunately the industry began to really make some changes to their formulations at that point. But I also found lead in many other things. I found lead in ginkgo biloba herbs imported from China. I found lead and cadmium in cacao products. Uh, we found tungsten in rice protein as well. I've also found high levels of lead in uh, calcium supplements. Lead tends to bind with calcium for chemical reasons uh, based, based on the um, atomic charge of the elements. So lead and cadmium tend, tend to go together. So a lot of uh, calcium supplements are contaminated with lead. The problem with this is if you eat lead, you're suppressing your immune function. So how do you not eat lead? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. One, you can't just automatically trust something because it's certified organic. Did you know there's no limit to the level of lead or cadmium or mercury that, that can be found in a certified organic food? The USDA has no limits whatsoever. Did you know that the FDA has no limit either? That someone can sell a, a vitamin or a supplement or a superfood or even an herb that has unlimited quantities of lead or mercury in it. There's no limit. There's no, there's no law against it whatsoever. So most people just don't know. I've tested over a thousand substances for these toxic heavy metals. I think I've done more research on this than anybody uh, that's active today in journalism. And what I found across the board is that fresh produce tends to be very, very clean of heavy metals if you purchase it in the United States, Canada, or Europe. It's very, very clean. But produce that is grown in China, or really anything that's grown in China, and then is dried or processed or ground up or extracted, tends to be very heavily contaminated. So number one, you need to check the country of origin of everything you're consuming. Be very, very wary of dried fruit powders, superfood powders, any kind of chemicals coming out of China. They can be incorporated into U.S. products. U.S. superfoods often contain ingredients from China. Certified organic products can be heavily contaminated. We found 10 parts per million lead in a mangosteen powder from Thailand one time. And it was being sold by an importer, a distributor. And when, when we told them about that, we said, hey, you know you're selling mangosteen with 10 parts per million? And we said, we don't want to buy it, so uh, you, know, you, should, you should stop selling that batch. You know what they said? They said, well, we're not breaking any laws. We're going to sell it to somebody else. So if you go on Amazon.com, you can buy all kinds of products that are heavily contaminated with toxic heavy metals. Amazon will sell you anything, even if it's counterfeit. They sell all kinds of counterfeit nutrition products and toxic heavy metal products uh, that, that seem to be uh, affordable. It's a great price, yeah, because it's imported from China and it's loaded with lead. And companies like us, Natural News, refuse to buy those products because we test them in our lab and we reject them. So other retailers are happy to sell them because they know that lead is invisible and people can't see it and people will eat anything if they think they got a good price on it. That's, that's the sad truth of the matter. So if you want to avoid these toxic heavy metals, you can, you can buy fresh produce and avoid these um, made-in-China products. Or if you really want the superfoods, and this, this is a blatant plug, but for all the right reasons, the Natural News Store at store.naturalnews.com is the only place that I know of in the world where we test everything that we sell for heavy metals. And we have strict limits. We reject a lot of products and most raw materials, and we won't sell them if they have substantial quantities of heavy metals. And you can actually see our, our ratings uh, at lowheavymetalsverified.org if you want to see um, our strict limits. 
So a lot of people are now learning to shop at Natural News Store because they know that, that those products are low in heavy metals. Many of them are just zero, zero levels, but some have very, very small trace amounts. I mean, extremely small, like one one hundredth of what you find from other <laughs> sources. So if you really want safe products that are low in heavy metals, but you want the superfoods, you want the cacao, the spirulina, the chlorella, astaxanthin, uh, all these amazing superfoods, the Natural News Store is absolutely guaranteed to be laboratory certified super clean. And we have long uh, announced an open challenge to anyone to purchase products from the Natural News Store and test them for heavy metals to confirm the levels that we are advertising because we're very meticulous about it. We test everything. Now we have to cover the emotional stresses that come with life and how they suppress immune function as well. This is a really important point to understand. When you are emotionally burdened, you will tend to deplete nutrients and you actually need to take more vitamins or more superfoods or more minerals or whatever your nutrient sources are. I like food-based vitamins like mega food, but you need to take more of these when you're suffering a lot of stress. What kind of stresses am I talking about? Well, not just the physical stress that we already covered, but emotional stresses. Maybe you broke up with someone. Maybe someone in your family just passed away and you're very sad. Maybe you're suffering from a bout of temporary depression because of something that happened in your life. Maybe you feel burdened for whatever reason. This stress can really take its toll on you nutritionally, so you have to really work to replace those missing nutrients. And that's going to require some nutritional supplementation or some juicing or consuming some superfoods that are naturally high in those nutrients. And if you don't do this, then you're going to continue in a nutritionally deficient immunosuppressed state. Have you ever noticed in the past when you caught a flu or a winter cold that it often happens at a time when you feel down to begin with, when you were, you were dealing with something, you know, something, a family or a relationship issue or maybe even a financial issue, but you were down and then you caught a cold right after that? That's what I'm talking about. The, the emotional issue suppresses your immune system, making you vulnerable to catching the cold. And then, you know, life feels like it sucks even more at that point because now not only are you depressed and burdened, but now you're sick in bed and you're dealing with all the fun of being <laughs> sick. Or not, or what a, you know, this is not, not a pretty situation to be in. So if you take proactive steps to make sure that if you're dealing with a burden, you know, give yourself some extra sleep, give yourself some extra vitamin D, give yourself some extra nutrition then you can often avoid that vulnerability that sometimes will lead to an infection. Because let's face it, the world is not a sterile place. The world is full of viruses circulating all over the place. If you are touching doorknobs or handling cash and coins, if you're interacting with the public in any way whatsoever, you are coming into frequent contact with all sorts of viruses and, and even bacterial strains. You're doing this on a daily basis. This is why your immune system is so important because it is what has kept you alive up to this point. And believe me, the world is not sterile. You cannot expect to live in a world where you're going to be able to isolate yourself from these things long term. Even if there's a pandemic and you lock yourself away in your home or apartment, you isolate yourself for some period of time. Sooner or later, after you emerge from your bunker, let's say, you are still going to have to probably suffer some kind of exposure to that virus at some point. It would be best not to have that happen right up front when the masses are also being exposed to it. It would be better to do that later when, let's say, the big wave has already passed and you may be able to get more supportive care. There might even be a, a retroviral drug that comes out that might be helpful, although I doubt it would be any better than the antiviral natural plants and substances that I already covered in episode six. Hey, there might even be a vaccine. Who knows? Maybe the drug industry would get lucky and create a vaccine that works. <laughs> and if they do, you might want to take that. You know, it's your choice. So the longer you wait, really, the more options you might have. But you're probably not going to be able to avoid exposure forever. And at the time that you are exposed to this, you want to be at peak, peak immune function. You want to be fully rested, 
You want to have little or no emotional burden. You don't want to be depleted in terms of energy or your adrenal function, for example. You want to be in tip-top shape with your body loaded up with all the amazing herbs that I talked about before. You have a healthy diet. You're eating garlic. You're eating basil. You're drinking licorice tea. You know, you're doing all these amazing things. You've got ginger in your diet. You have good, healthy vitamin D levels. And then if you are exposed to something, you have a very, very good chance of surviving it, building your own antibodies and allowing your own immune system to save your life, which is what it does. It, it has already done that countless times. So if you can control the moment of exposure, then you have the advantage. When people get killed by things like Ebola, it's because usually because they are exposed at a time that they didn't choose, at a time when they were immunocompromised, when their immune systems were deficient, their nutrition was deficient, they were stressed out, they were overexerted, they might have been already suffering from something else, such as a cold or tuberculosis or kidney disorders or liver disease or whatever. Ebola tends to kill people who are already vulnerable. So one of the legitimate survival strategies is don't be in a state of vulnerability. And fortunately, I want you to think back about this. You were born with a genetic blueprint for survival. I think some scientists have said that something like 25% of your genetic code is built for the sole purpose of protecting you from pathogens. It's so important and it's been so well developed through human history because of all these repeated exposures, these threats from pathogens, viral infections, bacterial infections, all these things that, that have, you know, amoeba even, that have threatened human survival throughout history. Well, we're built to defend against those. And if you really think about it, you come from a long line of survivors, obviously, or you wouldn't be here. So you have the blueprint for perfect survival. You, you have all the technology within you. It's found in every cell in your body. You have the technology to stay alive. It's been proven time and time and time again. It's actually been field tested time and time again. So, you know, it's funny how the, the vaccine industry wants to put out a vaccine that's never been tested. You know what has been tested for hundreds of thousands of years? Your immune system. Your immune system that was handed down to you from your parents, which came from their parents, that is field tested. That stuff works, and it, it works really, really well. So what you've got to do is stop suppressing it. Make sense? You've got to give it the tools, the nutrients that it needs to unleash its amazing blueprint, its amazing power, and then it can overcome almost anything. So that is what this course is all about. I want you to survive. I want people to live through this. I want people to wake up to the reality of how natural medicine can save lives and why a, a global system of medicine and healthcare that's based on the very limited, very corrupt, greed-driven, monopolistic approach of just vaccines and drugs is so dangerous to humanity. We should be embracing every type of medicine that's available to us, not just one system to the exclusion of all else. That's dangerous to humanity. That'll get a lot of people killed. So go ahead and share this information. Share this course. Take it to heart. This can save your life. And that's why I'm giving this away for free. If you choose to support us, you can shop at store.naturalnews.com. If you'd like to get some essential oils to build up your natural medicine chest, what I call the miracle or, or Mother Nature's miracle medicine chest, then go to naturalnews.com slash doTERRA, D-O-T-E-R-R-A, where you'll be able to sign up to purchase uh, doTERRA's essential oils at a discount or wholesale pricing or whatever you choose. These are ways that you can help us. With the, the revenues that we receive from sources like this, we do things like invest in the laboratory so we can test things for heavy metals. We test the water filters off the shelf. I spent probably last year thousands of dollars just buying water filters so that I could test them in the lab and release the results for free. We take these revenues, we put them to good use for benefiting humanity with these kinds of courses. How are we paying for the bandwidth of all these audio files that you're listening to right now? It's because of the support of people like you. And as a result, thanks to your support, we've never, ever had to ask for donations. We've never accepted any money from a government or a grant or an institution. 
Uh, we're not begging for money from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation <laughs> because <laughs> for, for obvious reasons. But uh, they do fund a lot of websites which then change their whole message to be suddenly pro-vaccine and pro-human depopulation, pro-GMO, and, and that kind of thing. We will not sell out. We are not that way. We believe in humanity and we believe in protecting humanity from every threat, whether it's prescription drugs, dangerous pharmaceuticals, pandemics, you know, viral, viral outbreaks, uh, processed food, additives, heavy metals, all these things. We are helping to protect humanity and keep humanity safe from these very real threats. So thank you for listening. My name is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger with naturalnews.com.